Well, good evening, and thank you for being with us here on Facebook Live. I'm Robert Hadlock. We're going to have a nice discussion tonight with uh, KXA and investigators Brittany Glass and Josh Hinkle. And I know your team has been digging into uh, harassment concerns and complaints at the Texas Department of Transportation. I guess my first question is, uh, why focus on TxDOT? There's so many agencies out there in all of state government. Uh, why TxDOT? We didn't start out uh, focusing on TxDOT. We just wanted to take a look at general hiring and salaries across all state agencies. So we looked at everyone, and when we crunched the numbers, um, it really kind of stuck out to us that there were so few women and minorities at TxDOT. TxDOT is a huge agency, 11,000 workers across the state. So that's really kind of what sparked it. And we started asking for more and more records, and that's where we came up with um, you know, these uh, accusations and allegations and complaints about sexual harassment, harassment, um, discrimination, and retaliation even. Yeah. Oh, important uh, topics, uh, of course, and uh, we know your analysis shows that women actually make more than $5,000, $5,000 more than men at the agency, uh, so why even do this story? Well, $5,000 more on average, and the big factor to remember here is that Obviously, TxDOT is an agency that has a lot of men, given the nature of some of the jobs that they do do. Um, and so when you consider all of the jobs and men and women, uh, a lot more men occupy some of those lower paying jobs. So we do feel that it is important to distinguish that. Uh, but we have to remember that we are in the year 2018. Gender wage gaps have been a huge popular topic really across the nation. And we believe that I mean, organizations, public and private, should ultimately be able to answer to questions as to why they may not be hiring as many women or minorities. Uh, and especially when you consider an agency like TxDOT, uh, we feel like it's important that they should be answering those questions and that they should be able to explain why their numbers aren't necessarily on par with other agencies similar to them. And Josh, I know your story doesn't just focus on women, you discovered some other things as well. Right, uh, you know, as Brittany mentioned, we looked at the minority numbers a lot as well. Um, we looked at historical data and went back 10 years to see what the numbers were like for women and African Americans and Hispanic. And we, when we look at uh, minorities like African Americans, the numbers are even lower than what they were before, percentage-wise. Um, Percentage-wise, there are fewer women and fewer African Americans at the agency than there were 10 years ago. And you mentioned there are over 11,000 employees at TxDOT in 254 counties. And it has a proud tradition, and uh, not everyone is unhappy working there, right? Absolutely, and I don't think that, that that's not the point of this investigation. Obviously, you are going to have people in every organization who are upset and who are happy. And we don't want to diminish the fact that there are employees at TxDOT who are happy, who uh, feel as women and minorities, they're happy in their jobs and they're proud to represent TxDOT. And you can see that ultimately with some of the marketing material that TxDOT has put out. Uh, you can see it, it's very clear and they have stepped up in terms of their recruiting efforts the past couple of years. Uh, they've been proud to make sure that they go and visit more colleges and universities and, and even high schools and things like that. But it's, it's very clear clear uh, the intent there and who they put on these marketing materials. And, and with any agency, they're going to uh, harp on those individuals that they've hired to, to kind of be the face of that organization. But the data is still there, and that data is incredibly important. And you found a lot of allegations of harassment and discrimination. How does it play into this? Well, we thought that maybe there might be some uh, complaints and allegations about the hiring numbers. Uh, so that's why we started asking for complaints about these salary wage gaps and the number of women and minorities that there were at the organization. But what we found with all of the complaints were there were hundreds of uh, allegations and complaints, like I said, about discrimination, harassment, sexual harassment, retaliation that have gone back over the last five years. And when you really dig into those official records, um, you know, some of them are pretty egregious. And we we really wanted to find out how were these things addressed. So what we've looked at in the story is, you know, when the human resources department goes in and investigates one of these complaints from a worker, what really ha happens with that? How often is there a resolution? How often does the worker's complaint actually uh, get heard and something is done, you know, as far as discipline of whoever might have been victimizing them? Um, and, you know, some, some of the things I, I think that lawmakers were seeing from our story was uh, 
certainly something that might be sparking some change in, in their areas. I think the complaints are what really got noticed when we talked to members of the House Transportation Committee, and it's certainly something that they're not going to let go of when they are working to, you know, figure out legislation or, or how to hold this agency accountable ahead of the next legislative session. And y'all have been working uh, several months on this, right? Absolutely. And I think uh, going back to what Josh said about the complaints, and that's something that uh, our viewers are going to hear from us really tonight and tomorrow night. Those complaints to me speak volumes uh, about kind of the culture at the Texas Department of Transportation. And through this investigation, I think that's what's been most shocking and alarming, perhaps, is just the fact that um, you know, even some lawmakers call it a boys club. And I think it's the fact that we're in the year 2018 and we haven't seen the Texas Department of Transportation attempt to stray from that is probably what's most alarming. And those complaints when they come out and when people see that, I, I think really uh, they'll be shocked. But yeah, it's, it's been months, five months in all, ultimately between state record data and employment numbers and, and reaching out to our lawmakers because I think they, to some degree, didn't even realize how big this issue was. You know, they've heard over and over again that, oh, TxDOT says that they're gonna do something about it, so we take them at their word. But I think finally, lawmakers are saying now is the time. I really do believe that they're going to be holding the players <laughs> accountable. And, and we really haven't gotten to see that. And Robert, you know, you, you did mention, you know, we've been working on this for five months and I'm really proud of our investigative team, not just because we're uncovering a lot of things, but this took a lot of work on our part. Um, you know, it, when you watch the stories tonight and tomorrow night, it's not just going to be me telling the story or Brittany telling the story. You're going to see both of us and you're going to see all the work that our team did. And the reason we wanted to work on it as a woman and a man is that there is equality on our team and that we wanted that to be fair and balanced in the story. And also, you know, this is a story that even though it, it is largely about women, it's really about the entire workforce. And as many lawmakers have pointed out, um, a state agency should be, uh, you know, the representation and setting an example mm -hmm. for the greater workforce in Texas and in the nation. Important work. Brittany and Josh, thank you for being with us and uh, joining us here on Facebook Live. You can join us for this special report, TxDOT's Long Road to Equality. That's tonight on KXAN News at 10 o'clock.